Hi everybody, this is Dr. Shamin Gonzalez from Dr. G's Toothpicks and today I have a short lecture on describing radiographic lesions using my lesions acronym. So go ahead, take a look, see what you guys think. If you guys like this and would like more content, please let me know. Also, there is a slightly longer version of this lecture available on my online CE, which is free, still is there as well, but that way you could also get some CE or CPD based on what country you guys are in. Okay, enjoy! And now we are on to the lesions acronym. So we are going to first start with L, which is location. And this is pretty straightforward. It is, where is the lesion? Now, on this image, I'm going to give you guys just a couple seconds before I have an arrow showing you guys exactly where that lesion is. Okay, and now that you guys know where that lesion is, our location would be the mandible. We're on the patient's right side between the canine and the first premolar, and you could say in the midroot area, extending to the apices. Now we are on to E, which is the edge of the lesion. And this is pretty straightforward. It is what is the edge of the lesion, and there's three general categories that I use for this letter. The first category is well-defined, and this is when you're able to trace around the entire edge of a lesion. With this, you may sometimes see a corticated edge, which will appear as a radiopaque or bony border around a lesion. And here I have two examples of something that would be classified as well-defined. And for example, if you were to take your finger and start at one point at the edge of the lesion and were to trace the entire outline of it, you'd be able to come all the way back to the starting point. So that would be classified as a well-defined lesion. The image on the right, you'll see, has a radiopaque border, and this would be an example of a corticated, well-defined lesion. And on this example again, it would classify as a well-defined lesion because you can trace the entire lesion all the way around. And if you do look, it also looks like there is a thin radiopaque border. So this would also get the classification as corticated. So now the opposite of well-defined is going to be ill-defined. And this is going to be when you can't determine where the lesion starts or stops with normal bone. Just as a tip for you guys, whenever I as a radiologist hear the terms ill-defined, I automatically think really, really bad things. Essentially malignancies, osteomyelitis, essentially bad stuff. So please be careful when you guys are using this term ill-defined because I do see a lot of beginners when they're describing want to use ill-defined a lot more than they should be. And here on this periapical radiograph I have this classified as ill-defined because if you look at the bone trabeculation you'll notice that it does not have a normal bone trabeculation appearance that you should be seeing on a periapical radiograph in the mandible Hence, I classify this ill-defined. If you also note, you can't tell where the abnormal bone is versus the normal bone, and also this one single radiograph is not capturing the entire area in question would be another thing to add. So this third category is in between well-defined and ill-defined, because thanks to teaching with students, of course, not everything will fall under either well-defined or ill-defined, and it is going to be well-localized. And so what I classify as a well-localized lesion is something where part of the lesion is well-defined, but maybe you can't trace the entire edge around, but you can still generally tell the location, the overall general location of that lesion. 
So on this panoramic radiograph, we've seen this lesion already before, I would classify this as well localized, indicating we can tell where the lesion is, those tooth bearing regions of the maxilla and the mandible, but I can't clearly trace the outline everywhere on this lesion. Starting with the S4 shape. So first is, what is the general shape of the lesion, or is there any obvious shape of the lesion? Because not every lesion will have an obvious shape. One common shape descriptor is a round or ovoid lesion. So you can see here in this example, this would be classified as either round or ovoid. And back to this panoramic radiograph, you guys have seen this one before. This would again also fall under the round or ovoid shape. Another term that is used occasionally with shape is the term scalloping. And what that refers to is a lesion that appears to kind of grow up and around all of the roots without displacing or generally resorbing the roots. This is going to be something that's much more common in the mandible, in the molar or premolar region. And here I have a rotated sagittal view from a comb beam CT showing the lesion kind of going up and down in between the roots. The yellow arrows are noting where that lesion kind of goes up between the roots as well as up into the furcation of that first molar. Now not every single lesion will have an identifiable shape, so if it has no identifiable shape, don't try to push it and come up with it. I have heard some very creative ones, snake-like, spider-like, and don't get me wrong, while those are definitely entertaining, they are not going to help you out when providing your description to come up with a differential diagnosis. And now we're on to I for internal. And for this, you are looking at what is the internal structure of the lesion. There's going to be three categories of which you can use. The first is going to be radiolucent, and this is another subcategory, which is unilocular, meaning the entire lesion is completely radiolucent. And again, on this panoramic radiograph, another radiolucent unilocular lesion. Now, another type of radiolucent lesion is one that is multilocular. And that is one where you're going to see bony septations within the lesion, as I've noted here with yellow arrows. And here we have just a portion of a panoramic radiograph, but you can see that it is radiolucent and that there are bony septations within the lesion, again, some of which I have noted with yellow arrows. The next category to use in internal would be radiopaque. So this is when an entire lesion is completely radiopaque as seen in this example. Here we have a coronal view showing a purely radiopaque lesion in the left mandible. And the last category we have is mixed radiolucent radiopaque. So this is a lesion that's going to have both radiolucent components and radiopaque components. And on this panoramic radiograph, again, we've seen this and you guys will continue to see it for a little while. This has both radiolucent components and radiopaque components. So starting with the O for other, and what this stands for is what is the lesion doing to the surrounding structures, as in the anatomy and the teeth, or is it doing anything to the surrounding structures? 
So starting off with teeth, one of the things that a lesion can do is displace the teeth. So if it is displacing the teeth, it is always good to state which tooth is being displaced and what direction it's being displaced. Now you guys saw this example a little bit earlier in the right mandible, the radiopaque lesion. You will see that it's actually displacing the developing premolars. So you could say that it's displacing that first premolar to the mesial, as well as it's displacing the second premolar towards the distal. Now another thing that a lesion can do to adjacent teeth is that it can resorb a tooth. So if you see that there is any resorption, put down the tooth that's being resorbed and where is it being resorbed. For example, on this little image that I made, this would be both these premolars are being resorbed in the midroot portion. And here I have a periapical radiograph where you can see there's a large radiolucent area here that is resorbing the apices on the molars. And now I'm going to move on to anatomy and potentially what the lesion is doing to the surrounding anatomy. So for example, on this panoramic radiograph, I'm pretty sure you guys can find the lesion in question. It's over there in the mandible on the left hand side. And if you look specifically at the mandibular canal, you'll see that it's being displaced inferiorly, especially when you compare it to the right mandibular canal, which I have both noted with yellow arrows. And here we have a axial slice from a comb beam CT. And you'll note that, especially on the right hand side, that there is expansion of the maxilla. And if you guys are able to see where the expansion's at, so for example, on this case, you can see that the expansion is out towards the facial. Go ahead and add that in. You'll also note that there is some expansion as well towards the midline in the palatal aspect of the right maxilla. Now sometimes there's not going to be any obvious effect to the surrounding teeth or the anatomy, so you can just put no effect on surrounding anatomy or teeth. And now we're on to N for number. So this is just how many of the same lesion are present. Most commonly, there will be single, meaning that there's only going to be one of the lesion present. So here on this panoramic radiograph, you can see that there is a single lesion present. Now, less commonly, there'll be multiple lesions, and again, we're looking at the same kind of lesion, not two different types of lesions. And you guys have seen this case before. This would also classify as multiple lesions because you can tell that they are all the same. And on to our last letter in the lesions acronym, the S for size. So this is pretty straightforward. It is what is the size of the lesion. You can look at things like the height, inferior to superior, as well as the width, mesial distal, and facial lingual if you have an image that shows you those dimensions. Again, just showing you guys images here, so I don't have any actual sizes to give you for this case. And there you guys have it. That is my lesions acronym that I created when I was teaching at the university. Thanks for hanging around with me. And like I said before, if you guys would like a little bit more in depth with more practice images, you can go to my online CE. I'll have the link down below. The course is free because I believe strongly that you should know how to do this. It is something I <laughs> get very frustrated when I see poor radiographic descriptions. And again, if you guys like this kind of content, please let me know and give it a like. Thanks. Bye.